The dirty little devil. <laughs> What's this? A job. I didn't know he kept a diary. What's he do worth writing about? <laughs> Lot. Secretive little sod. <laughs> Oh, my God, a press daffodil. <laughs> the great Jesse. <laughs> Let's see. January the 1st, 1969. Dear diary. <laughs> so we begin another year. I awoke this morning with a feeling of great optimism. I am convinced that 1969 will be my year of destiny. Something is going to happen to me this year. A January 2nd. Went to the dentist, got to have six teeth out. <laughs> February. Old Misery Gut's birthday tomorrow. <laughs> Must get him something, otherwise I'll never hear the end of it. <laughs> April the 4th. The sun is shining outside, but it is dull in comparison to the sunshine in my heart. Ugh. <laughs> Last night I met Melitza, a Yugoslavian au pair girl from Belgrade. She is beautiful beyond my poor inadequate words. Meeting her at the Skinner's Arms tonight. <laughs> April the 5th. Melitza didn't turn up. <laughs> Waited till chucking out time. If I ever see that fat, ugly cow again, I'll smash it. <laughs> May the 7th. George took me to a party last night. One or two fair sorts there, but don't remember much about it. I... Yes. Does Mr. Harold Steptoe live here? No. <laughs> Look, dear, you've made a mistake. Well, this was the address I was given, and I checked it on the electoral register. Oh. Well, he's not in. Oh. When are you expecting him in? I don't know. I don't see him very often. Oh. I wanted to talk to him. It's very important. I'm afraid I can't help you. Last time I saw him, he was talking about going to Australia. He may be there by now, for all I know. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh don't cry. Uh, here, you better come inside. Oh! I've been looking for him for months. About eight, by the look of things. <laughs> That's not going to get you anywhere. Oh, my God. <laughs> Here, you, you better come in and sit down. Oh. <coughs> Your name isn't Melissa, is it? No, it's Daphne. Daphne Tomlin. Well, look, Mrs. Tomlin. Miss Tomlin. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, I don't know where he is. Uh, what do you want to see him about? Well, I wanted to see him about this. <laughs> and what's he got to do with that? He's the father. Never! My Harold's a good boy. He wouldn't do a thing like that. You want to be careful, Mrs. Miss, making accusations like that. What are you trying to do? Ruin my son's career? Oh, I don't want to ruin anything. I just want to talk to him about it. Well, you can't. He doesn't live here. He hasn't lived here for years. Can't be him. <laughs> Bobo! Oh, 
Hello, little dad. Oh, God, I've had a good day today. I've got a car load out there. Yeah, and what's more, you've got a pram load in there. <laughs> but you've done it this time, haven't you? <laughs> I've done what? There's a bird in there eight months after stick and she says, yeah. <laughs> You're kidding. I'm not, but she is. <laughs> Daphne Tomlin, her name is. Daphne? I've never heard of her. She's heard of you. Have you got no sense? Fancy giving her your name. I don't even buy it, honestly. Here, hang on. Oh, uh, good evening. Can I help you? <laughs> Mr. Harold Steptoe? Yes. I'm Daphne Tomlin. Oh. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Well, somebody has. <laughs> Have we met? Well, yes, I believe so. Oh, God, blimey, you should know. Look, please, will you keep out of this? Uh, well, I I'm afraid I, I don't seem to recognise you, That's Miss Tomlin. It. That's right. Deny it. Well, to tell you the truth, I don't seem to recognise you either. Cool, blimey. You must have done it with your eyes shut. <laughs> you shut that. Are you sure you've got the right person? I think so. I believe we met at a party at Hilary Philpott's last May. Hilary? Oh, I don't seem to recall a girl named Hilary. It's a man. Oh. <laughs> I don't seem to recall a man named Hilary either. I certainly would have remembered that night. We ain't got many Hillary's in the circles are moving. <laughs> well, that's just it. Apparently somebody brought you to the party and nobody else knew you. That's why it's taken so long to find you. It seems that sometime during the evening, you and I met. <laughs> met? I'm afraid I don't remember very much about it. I think I must have had too much to drink. Yeah, that's what they all say. Would you like to go and make a cup of tea or something? <laughs> Please, sit down. Uh, Daphne. Daphne. Well, look, we'll soon sort this out. Uh, please, don't try to think I'm trying to get out of anything. But uh, if you don't remember me and I don't remember you, how can you be sure that we actually... Somebody saw us go into the bedroom. Oh, that doesn't prove nothing, of course. I, mean, I could have looked for your coat or hat or something. Oh, perhaps that's why we went in. But I don't think it's what we did while we were in there. <laughs> we didn't come out for over an hour. Everybody wanted to go home and they had to climb through the window to get their coats. And they saw us. Do you remember going to a party last May? 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 Have a look at your diary. What diary? I said, what diary? <laughs> I don't know. I I'll go and get the tea. What do you know about my diary? <laughs> You've been snooping around my bedroom again, haven't you? No, I haven't. No, you're urging me. Where is it? Now, where is it? I don't know. I don't know. Hands on the table. <laughs> <laughs> you nouncy little bleeder. <laughs> you let me drive it in this house. A monkey in a zoo gets more privacy than I do. Well, I'll keep you a moment. <laughs> you forced it up. You have been reading it. I have. I have. You have. You have. I don't want to cause any trouble. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> we want to find out the truth, don't we? May, May the seventh. <laughs> I'll attend to you after. May the seventh. So George took me to a party last night. One or two fair salts there. I don't remember much about it. I must have had a skin full. I think we both did. I didn't want to go to the party in the first place. I was feeling very miserable because I'd just broken with my boyfriend. Oh, perhaps he's the one who... No. No? No. We never had any uh, relations. What's your relations got to do with it? <laughs> Not those sort of relations. She means that they never had any carnal knowledge of each other. Oh, blimey, no wonder he left her. Oh, it's so disgusting. 
Oh, you've got a mind like a cesspit, you have. <laughs> go on, make the tea, go on. Miss Tomlin and I have got something to discuss. Go on. Well, don't commit yourself. See a lawyer first. <laughs> I must apologise for my father. He is very uncouth. Oh, that's all right, I understand. He's only trying to protect you. Should have heard what my family said. Well, you've got a family? Yes. Any brothers? Two, six and seven. Feet? No. <laughs> That's how old they are. Look, Miss Tomlin, although I do not recall the episode on the night in question, it did obviously take place. I would like to apologise for the condition you now find yourself in. Well, I'm just as much to blame as you. I needn't have to tell you that had I been sober, this would never have happened. Oh, I see. Oh, please, don't misunderstand me. I mean, I'm not trying to imply that I don't find you attractive, because I do. You're, you're very attractive. The thing now is, what are we going to do about it? <coughs> that depends on you, Mr. Steptoe. What do you want to do about it? Well, naturally, though, this has come as a great shock to me. I'm fully prepared to face up to my responsibilities. That's very honourable. Most men would try and get out of it. Oh, I'm not that sort of person. I must have had my fun, now I've got to pay for it. <laughs> I don't want you to think I'm trying to blackmail you into anything, Mr Steptoe. I would like my baby to have a name, but I certainly don't expect you to marry me just because of that. Oh, I'm sure you don't. Well, it's hardly a good basis for marriage, is it? Oh, of course, if you don't want to marry me, I'll fully understand. I didn't say that. No, I mean, having seen me sober, well, seen me, both of us, knowing what I do for a living, you might not want to marry me. Nobody else has up till now. Well, no, I ain't got much to offer. It would mean living here, but I'll face it. <laughs> Well, perhaps it would be better if I was just to cough up a few quid for the sprog and we forgot all about it. <laughs> Mr. Steptoe, I came here not knowing what to expect. I didn't know who you were or anything about you. And I find that you're a very kind and considerate person. And I think a girl could do a lot worse than marry someone like you. Do <laughs> you mean that? I do. All right, then. You're on. <laughs> Only if you're sure. I'm sure. Only we're not in love, are we? Well, I don't think that matters. I mean, we're too old for that. Well, I am. <laughs> well, I think you ought to know. I'm 28. Oh, that is a lovely age for a woman. I'm 35. No, I'm not. I'm 39. <laughs> well, that's not very old. It is when you're 39. Oh, I prefer mature men. I always have. Oh, well, I mean, I've knocked about a bit. I can't deny that. I mean, uh, if I was to die tomorrow, I can't complain. <laughs> I've had my share. <laughs> <laughs> that is... I, I, I'm... Well, that is settled, then? Yes. I suppose we'd better do it as quickly as possible. Well, yes, I think so. Where? I don't think we should have a white wedding, do you? <laughs> How does Paddington Registry Office grab you? All right, then. Monday? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll get the licence and I'll put your name down for the hospital as well. I'll get a wedding ring. We'll have to get engaged afterwards because I'm a bit boracic lint at the moment. <laughs> you are sure, Mr Steptoe? Harold. Harold. I'm sure. Definitely. <laughs> At it again, are you? <laughs> have you had enough? Can you knock before you come in? This is my house. I don't have to knock at my own house. Well, what have you decided? How much is she stinging you for? She ain't stinging me for nothing. We're going to get married. <laughs> married? You're easy, ain't you? First bird that comes in here up the duff and you're so proud you're <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm gonna get married whether you like it or not. Because look, I'm 39 years old. I know what I'm doing. I'm marrying her because I want to. And every child should have a father. What am I saying? <laughs> you need your brains tested. Bang her 50 bob or we can get shot of her. Now, look, you. I've never had much out of you. I'm gonna get something now. I want a look of joy on your face. Like every fella on hearing that his son is getting married. Do you hear me? <laughs> I want a look of joy. <laughs> Are you joking me? Well, let's have it. I can't breathe. <laughs> a look of joy. That's better. <laughs> and now, I want you to say, congratulations, son. I hope you'll be very happy. Never. Him. I'll kill him. <laughs> Come on. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> but I hope you will be very happy. Mm. Yeah, I hope you'll be very happy. <laughs> and I've given you 500 quid as a wedding present. <laughs> You'll have to kill me to get that. <laughs> so I'll get it out of you later. And look, uh, a kiss for the bride. <laughs> Well, I think I'd better be going now. <laughs> well, don't blame you. I shall uh, see you out. Is he all right? Yeah, he's all right. He's strong as an horse. He'll last me out. <laughs> We've got to face it. He doesn't like me. He don't like anybody. Oh, don't you worry about him. Once he gets used to the idea, he'll be all right. Listen, if he says one word to you after we're married, you let me know. And he'll be out of this house so fast his feet won't even touch the ground on the way to the old people's home. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Steptoe. I do hope we're going to get along well together. I do realise how you must feel about everything. But I'll do my best to make Harold a good wife and be a good daughter-in-law to you. And if it's a boy, we'll call it after you. <laughs> Well, uh, run you home on horse and cart, if you like. Uh, the only thing is it might jolt you up a bit. That's oh, the only thing. that's all right. I'll get a taxi. Oh, well, uh, here you are. Here's a quid. Mm -hmm. that, that should be enough. I'll uh, see you tomorrow, then. Yes, we've got a lot to do. Are we going to have a reception? Well, I should hope so. You better ask your father. That is down to him, you know. Yeah, we'd better draw up a list. Well, I'll give you mine now. Him. <laughs> I don't want him to come, really. Well, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Good night. Good night. I'm going to be a father. <laughs> I wonder if I enjoyed it. <laughs> Have a good day. Not bad. What have you got there? Personal things. Oh. The things for the baby. Let's have a look. No, I don't want you touching them. Putting your germs all over them. They're delicate things, babies. I don't want you breathing anywhere near him until he's 18. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least until he's had his inoculation. <laughs> You was a baby once and you never caught anything off me. Well, I was immunised, wasn't I? I mean, three generations living in this rat hole. It's like the jiffo was falling into a Suez Canal. Nothing ever happens to them. Oh, go on. Give us a look. I won't touch. Promise. All right. I'll stand over there. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, they're nice. Do you like them? Yeah, they're pretty. Keep his little plate swung on, Dave. Oh. Don't touch! Don't touch! Don't touch! Don't touch! Get back! Ah, <laughs> oh. oh, that 
That's nice. <laughs> Bit small, though, isn't it? Well, I can't say small. It's for babies, not for Harry Seacombe. <laughs> The Steptoes was always big babies. You was ten and a half pounds. Nearly as big as I was. Oh, I knew you'd have to be bigger than me. Well, I was eleven and a pound too. Oh, well, you ain't grown much, have you? How much did that lot set you back? With a pound twenty-five quid. You must be crackers. I kitted you out for seven and a tanner. Well, I'm sure you did. The next time it battled dressed in a pair of boots, I suppose. <laughs> what was that sandbag with two holes cut in for my little leg? I <laughs> got good gear. I got it on the round from a titled lady in Wilton Crescent. You look like little Lord Fauntleroy, you did. Oh, I remember. It was great for round here, wasn't it? I got duffed up every time I went out. I never even had to buy as much as a handkerchief until you were 16. Well, you t I never had an handkerchief until I was 16. <laughs> You're wasting good money. You could have got all his stuff off the cart and washed. You can't tell it from you. Oh, my son ain't gonna wear other people's cast offs. He ain't gonna be brought up like I was. My son is not gonna waste his life sitting around on a north in a car. It could be a girl. Oh, no. Oh, no, I can't have a girl. No, I don't want a girl. No. <laughs> That's not my fault. No, I'm not having a girl. Now, you don't have much choice, do you? You put your penny in, pulls the handle and takes your chance on the <laughs> No, I can't get a girl. That's got to be a boy. I've got, I got a feeling, Dad. It's funny, isn't it? All these years, I've wanted a family of my own. I've given up hope. And suddenly, in 24 hours, I've got a wife and a baby. I'm glad it happened like this. Getting them both together, I mean, has saved time. <laughs> she's, she's not bad looking, is she? I, mean, I, I could have done a lot worse, couldn't I? Yeah, I've done a lot worse. Lots of times. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, <laughs> you can't be a grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> is that to it? I'll enjoy that. I'll teach him a few things. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> Harold, I'm not very really good at this sort of thing. But I know we've had our ups and downs. But I want you to know that if this is what you want, I'm happy for you. Well, thank you, Dad. I know I'm a bit of an old twit, but I'm not a bad judge of character. And I think she's going to be all right. Yes, I think so, too. And Harold, I'm going to give you that 500 quid as a wedding present. Oh, no, I was only joking. Oh, I had you by the throat, didn't I? Oh. I want you to have it. So that's where you keep it. <laughs> I've been looking for that for 20 years. Here you are. I don't want to say, Dad. No, I don't say anything. Just take it before I change my mind. Thank you, Dad. It's all right, son. Good to see you so happy. <laughs> That'll be Daphne now. Hello, love. Come in. How's it all going, then? All right, is it? Hello, hello. The George! Hello. What were you doing now? I thought you were supposed to be in Hong Kong. I got back the day before yesterday, didn't I? Here, brought out for you. Oh, oh, oh great. Isn't that great? That's the yeah. first one I've ever seen outside of a tin. <laughs> come in, come in, come in. Hello, Mr. Stepno. Hello, George. Hey, I've that cop, the first wedding present. <laughs> oh, look, George, let me introduce you. This is Daphne. Oh, uh, yeah, we have already met. Oh, well, uh, you know all about us, then. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that's why I'm here, really. Well, the point is, Harold, I, uh, I heard about Daphne and a wedding yesterday, and uh, I can't let you do it. What do you mean? You can't let me do it? What's got to do with you? Well, you remember it was me who took you to that party. Well, it was me who did everything else as well. What, what do you mean? It's true, Harold. It wasn't you, it was me. I can't be you. It was me if I saw on the bed. Oh, yeah, yeah, you was on the bed, all right. Spark out all evening. What I didn't see was me under the bed. I died under when they come through the window. <laughs> Is this true, Daphne? Was it him? I don't know. I think it must have been. Otherwise, how would he know about my mole? <laughs> 
Who am I? Well, there you are, you see. You don't even know where it is. <coughs> well, the point is, Harold, as soon as I heard of Daphne who was in the club, well, I couldn't let you take the blame, could I? So I went along to see her. Well, to cut the long story short, we are getting married. No, 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 she, she's got to marry me. I, I, I don't mind about the baby. I, I, I'll bring it up like it was my own. It don't matter. Daphne? I'm sorry, Harold, but I think it would be better if I married the real father. But I've just told you, I, I don't mind. It don't matter. For the baby's sake, Harold. But I'd love it like it was my own. It, it don't make no difference. But supposing he finds out when he's older that I could have married his father and I didn't. He might grow up to hate you. To hate me? It must be better for him to have his real mum and dad. You do see that, don't you? Yeah, I suppose so. I really think I ought to marry George. Yeah? Father. I'm sorry, Al. All right, George. That was a really noble thing that you was going to do. I'm proud to know you. Well, my dear, we'd better be going. We've got uh, lots to do. You are, of course, invited to the wedding, Harold. In fact, uh, I'd like you to be the best man. I'll thank you, George. I'll be very honoured. Wish you both every happiness. Thank you, Harold. You're very sweet. Come along, my dear. Before you go, you, you better have these. I don't suppose all I need for them now. Oh, that is kind. I hope it's a boy. Well, it's, it's very kind of you, Harold. Very kind indeed. Give you a ring tomorrow, Harold, and let you know what the arrangements are. Yes, right. right. It was a narrow escape, wasn't it? You nearly got lumbered there. Yes, I did. Didn't I? You're better off out of it. I suppose so. Of course you are. Can you imagine it? All them nappies hanging all around the place. Yeah. Bleeding kid roaring its thighs out all night long. Yeah. We've got no sleep. Not a wink. Kids stinking the place out. Huh? Yeah. Screaming his head off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going out to get drunk. Harold, can I come with you?